Delighted to be here, and that, that was that was really interesting, Katie. I suppose I, I'm mostly interested in my my work as a te uh, working with teenagers, and I've noticed obviously the the kind of the, the devastation that seems to be happening with so many teenagers today, and I. I've traced it back, I've been studying it quite a bit, as we all have, I suppose, in the last few years. Many of us are thinking harder about these concepts than we have been before. And I traced back, like, really a hundred or so, a bit over a hundred years ago, Stanley Hall first created, as such, this, the construct of a teenager. And it hasn't gone well for girls. In a way, there was a kind of a societal acceptance that we allowed children to be children, then they moved into that kind of netherworld really, this kind of in between times, between 10 and 20, where they become a sexualized person. And then in and around, depending on the culture, depending on the context, they become an adult, uh, an adult human female. And they, <laughs> you could say, and with that, they're, they're, they are a sexualized person. And, you know, society didn't do lots of things very well in the past, and we're all aware of it. I do think that the the concept of the teenager hasn't gone very well for teenage girls. So, you know, when, when in the 1950s... T t so Stanley Hall, by the way, was the psychologist who created this concept in 1904. He really pinpointed it, he did a study, he talked about adolescence, and he talked about, you know, the challenges associated with being an adolescent. And it hadn't really been identified or really thought about very much previous to that. So that was 1904. In around the 1950s, you know, you've got James Dean, you've got this kind of explosion of the teenagers and rebelliousness. And that went very well in many ways uh, for some people. But there's a, a strong group of girls for whom this hasn't gone well, because with it came the sexualization of the girl between 10 and 20 as such. And with that, when you look at mental health and when you look at girls and you realise, well, it wasn't that much longer, maybe the 60s, certainly the 70s, anorexia started to, to rear its head. So it's like with the arrival of teenage girls being sexualized, which came, I would argue, no, I, I, I don't have evidence. <laughs> All I have is, is a lot of theory I bring to you. But I have, I have studied the kind of what, what on earth has happened that all these girls started to go towards anorexia. Now, without a doubt, social contagion happened. And there's a certain kind of semantic contagion that happens that when you get the word, more people become it. And so with anorexia, as soon as there was a word to describe the condition, more people were going to identify with the condition because of the cultural acceptance of it. And um, from that, at first I've no doubt psychotherapists and doctors and all sorts of people would have been going, what is going on? What is going on with these girls? Why are they starving themselves? I'm not saying it didn't happen before. It didn't happen in massive numbers before. And then we moved on through the decades and bulimia arrived in a very similar way. You've got girls kind of wanting to reduce, girls self-harming, girls desexualizing themselves, girls often high achieving girls, cerebral girls, trying to kind of vanish from being who they are, trying to stop their body from developing. And then you move on through the decades, we're up into the 90s nearly and the noughties, and you've got self-harm. Again, doctors would have been scratching their head going, what are they doing? They're, they're harming themselves? Now, I'm not saying it's confined to anorexia spread into other cohorts. So did um, bulimia and so has self-harm. It often began with the teenage girl and they were the canary in the coal mine of how to express self-loathing to your body, how to kind of manifest a condition that is culturally accepted by other people because it's, it's spreading and how to vanish in a way, how to de-sex yourself because you're going from the 10 to the 20, which I don't think we as a society have figured out at all. How do we operate the fact that girls are, and it's almost taboo for me to say it, that girls at 13, girls at 12, girls at 15 are having a sexual awakening. How do we handle that? I don't think we, we know. We just go, oh, don't speak about it, don't think about it. It freaks us all out and we don't know what to do. And we as a society are going to have to grapple with it because right now they, they aren't managing. They don't really know how to become a sexual being. And we don't know how they should become a sexual being. If you look at the age of consent through the countries, you go from Italy to England to America and you're going, these are widely different rules. 
and we're supposed to be kind of the Western world, so you would think there'd be some sort of consensus, and there isn't. And so from anorexia, I'm not saying once it came, it assimilated, there was social contagion and it moved through the culture. Then it went into bulimia, it came, it stayed. Then it moved into um, uh, self-harming, it came, it stayed. So now we have all of them. And then what happened? Gender dysphoria. A new way for a girl, because that's where it manifested in, in the explosion, to self-harm, one would argue, certainly to kind of reduce themselves, to desex themselves, to vanish. It feels like it's part of a continuum. It feels like there's a golden thread happening here that people aren't seeing enough. And it feels to me that this is a, a majorly connected with a girl trying to grapple with the fact that she's been sexualized before she's ready to be sexualized. And I do think that, I honestly think that the female form, I think we're gorgeous. And I think teenage girls are particularly gorgeous. There's a loveliness to them. There's a loveliness to their body. We don't know what to do with that fact, but it's there. It, you know, the artists certainly have taken up on it over many years. And when you look at the kind of, the, the combination of, it's not just the birth of the teenager that arrived, a hyper-sexualized era has arrived with online, um, with the online world. And so in the 1990s, when we first came across the internet, I remember, I just thought the internet was for porn addicts in the 1990s. <laughs> That's what it was for, really. And child abusers, kind of child abusers and porn addicts was what the internet was for. And I was, I, that's, that's what it was condemned to in my mind. Then over time, we, it became mainstream. But I was right, there was a massive amount because I've worked with enough people now, especially with detransitioners and the grooming that happened in the 1990s and the noughties was pretty ferocious because it was... Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm just really conscious that there seems to be an echo. So I'm trying, trying to do my sound engineering here. Is that better? Yeah. So um, where was I? Yeah, the, the, the porn that is evident now has never been evident before. And, you know, I've traced back as well the kind of the history of pornography, and it goes back many thousands of years. There's a definite testosterone linkage with looking at visual images and getting off to it. So I can see where it came from, and we know it's been there for many, many thousands of years. It was on the cave walls, and it wasn't just erotic, it was porn. But I think what happened in, in the 1980s, they, they kind of normalized porn. Certainly from the 1950s onwards, sorry. <laughs> sorry. From the 1950s onwards, kind of coinciding with that teenage kind of explosion, they, uh, they brought in, you know, Playboy and all those magazines very much at the same time. You know, the same thing was happening. Girls were just shrinking in this. Not all of them, but many of them. And then they moved on, it continued on simultaneously. In the 1980s, they normalized it by putting porn. It was a very pivotal point that isn't explored enough. They put porn in all the hotel rooms. It was freely available in the hotel rooms in America from the 1980s onwards. Then online, 1990s, the internet came. And then suddenly porn became almost, you know, interlinked with the internet. And when you look at the money, the exponential growth of the porn industry since the 1990s, it's phenomenal. And what has happened was, as a result, is the teenage girl in particular, that beautiful kind of girl who's trying to come to become a, a, an adult, has been sexualized to a point of, of horror, really. And so, you know, girls that would be coming to me and they, they would be saying, you know, the boys beside them are watching porn on the school bus, you know, and they know the girl beside them because they're sitting together every day. They know the girl is put off. And they're getting off on the fact that they're watching porn. And in fairness to the boy, he has been hypersexualized. He's been pornified just as much as the girl. It's, it's two things that's going on. And what it is is a society that has no clue how to handle the sexual sexualizing of the child to the adult. And as a result, you could argue, gender has come in as a way to repress, uh, I think, certainly an awful lot of girls' sexual identity. That rather than their, they, they might think that they have um, a sexual body and, a, and they might have a sexual awakening 
and many of the teenagers who are turning to gender, not all of them, and it has to be noted, not all of them by a long shot, but many of them might have homophobia, or might be internalised homophobia because they know they're a lesbian or they're, they're getting the first stirrings of lesbian. But even when they're not, um, you know, same sex attracted, they are still freaked out by their, their growing sexualization. So the reason why I'm going here in this talk, I'm kind of talking mostly to women here as far as I can see. And I think we need to think about this as a society. How do we deal with the fact that between in 10 and 20, we become sexual and we don't know what to do. And what's happened is frankly, porn has grabbed it. Hypersexualization has grabbed it. A tabloid version of, ta of sex has grabbed it and we need to wrestle it back. And we don't do that by being puritanical, and we don't be, do that by kind of ignoring and shutting down the fact that there are sexual instincts in teenage girls. Because that doesn't help us at all. What we need to do is actually grapple with it, which is, which is very difficult. So I hope you enjoy that, thank you.